Hey everybody, welcome back to Organic Chemistry. Now we're going to do alkenes part 3. And I hope that at this point you've mastered parts 1 and 2. Okay? Because the more comfortable you are with parts 1 and 2, the easier this part's going to be. Well, at least for the alkyne part of it. Okay? So we're going to learn the alkyne reactions and synthesis right now. And it's going to be a very short video. But we will do a lot of problems as usual. Okay? But the idea here is that I'm assuming that you've gone through all your alkene reactions because a lot of what we're going to learn here is going to lean upon all the foundational information that we talked about from the alkenes. Okay? So, if you did not study the alkene reactions, I do not recommend that you look at this video. Okay? This video is assuming that you have the alkene stuff uh, down or at least you're comfortable enough to, to look at this and see how it relates. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the acid-base properties of an alkyne. And it turns out that, of course, in order to be considered an acid, the alkyne must be terminal. Now what I mean by terminal is that if you have an alkyne and it's somewhere in the middle of the molecule, like that, then this is called an internal alkyne. And that in turn means that this could never be considered an acid. It's not acidic. This is not acidic. Because in order to be acidic, it has to be on an end so that you have a proton to remove. This is a terminal alkyne, right? And this is considered acidic because it has an H on its end. So at the end is an H. This is also terminal. This is the easiest. This is also terminal. And this one here in particular is known as acetylene. Acetylene. Don't ask me why it's acetylene, E-N-E, -E, instead of Y-N-E. -E. It's just a very old name. And at the time, I don't know why, but they used the ene instead of ein to represent this right here. So this is called an acetylene. And again, it's just a, a common name for this ethyne, right? Okay. Now, when you think about an alkyne as an acid, the first thing, again, you have to make sure it's terminal, meaning it's on an end, or you could think of it as having a minimum of one H to remove, right? So let's think about the alkyne when it does have an H that you can remove. So here's an H, and we're going to have some sort of base pull off that H, right? So we need a base to pull off this H in order for it to act as an acid, right? So here's the acid, and then here's its conjugate base, right? This is the conjugate base. Now if this was acetylene, actually let's start there, so if this is an alkyne like that, ethyne, then this is known as an acetylide anion. So it's an acetylide anion. Let me see if I can clean up that typing, or that writing. Acetylide anion. Okay, so an acetylide anion plus HA. Now, here's the thing. The pKa of this right here is not very large. It's about 25, right? So we need to have a base that becomes a conjugate acid that is greater than 25. The reason why I say that is because if you remember, we always go from the lower number to the higher number. So there are not many things that can actually pull off the H of an alkyne. And we just have to be familiar with the ones that can. So let's go to our pK chart and let's identify number one. Here's my alkyne right there. And now what this is telling me is that everything below is strong enough to pull off the H, but nothing above that alkyne would be able to do it because these are smaller numbers, right? That means that if this was a base and it pulled off that H, it becomes an alcohol. And the alcohol is a, a, is a stronger acid. It's a lower pKa. So alkynes can only lose their proton provided any of these right here are the bases that we're using. And so let's look at what they are. There's H minus, N minus, and carbons that are negative. Okay? Those are the only ones that will do the job. So let's list that out over here. So we can have an H minus, 
an N minus or a R minus. Now let me emphasize something that you're never going to see them in this form. Okay, these are the bases that we can use. What you might see is NaH or NaNH2, right? You might see Mg with a, um, a Br here and a CH3, or you might see Li, CH2, CH3, or maybe you'll see an Li with a CH and then a CH2. Now let me tell you what this is all about. Well, I think you know by now, but let me just remind you. All this means is that the, whatever the metal's touching is negative. So that right there represents that right there, right? And if you have NH2, then that would be represented by an NH2 up here that's negative. Okay, if you have a carbon that's touching a metal, then really that's just a CH3 minus. You have to remember that. This is a CH2 CH3 minus, right? And finally, this one here would be a C double bond CH2 with an H and a negative charge, right? So lithium is a metal that's very common to stay next to a carbon. And so, so is magnesium. So you have to be sensitive to the fact that they're not going to give you a negative. They're going to give you some metal with the, with the negative itself, okay? Provided the alkyne is terminal, and B, one of these is the base, H, N, or R, then you will have a reaction, okay? You will lose the proton from that alkyne. Now, I want to point out one of the most um, unusual characteristics, and that is nitrogen and carbon are reacting together. So let's look at that one by itself. If I have an alkyne, and I write Na, NH2, or some variation of nitrogen being negative, you know, maybe with carbons, for example, on it, but nothing else besides carbon. Well, when we look at this, we wouldn't necessarily think that this is going to work the way that it does, because normally, when we go ahead and do a reaction that has the same row comparison, right? This is a row comparison. We would think that N would win. Do you remember back in our exam one, as well as when we talked, well, pretty much exam one. Exam one, we said, or yeah, exam two as well, we said that nitrogen is more electronegative than carbon, so it should be more acidic, right? This should be more acidic, meaning it should go back the other way, but it doesn't. And this is a special case. This is a special case that you must remember, okay? There's no way around it. This is an exception to the rule. So normally, when you're looking at atoms on the same row, the one that's more electronegative would win. But this is the only special case that you need to remember for yourself. Okay? All right. Because take a look at the numbers. Nitrogen is 36. Carbon of an alkyne is 25. Notice that nitrogen is more acidic than any other carbon type. Right? Just alkyne. That's all you have to worry about. All right. Now, this is the acid properties of an alkyne. And really, this is all we need to know for now. But we're going to learn at the end of this video how to use the property of an alkyne to make it negative and then do some sort of reaction. But before we get there, let's continue. So let's talk about how you make alkynes. Okay, the synthesis of alkynes. Now, what you need to know here is that there are a bunch of ways to make alkynes. And it's not really so important about the mechanism as much as just being aware of when it would happen. Okay, I'm going to go over the mechanism with you. However, I just want you to focus on the bigger picture because usually the mechanism for this type of, of uh, question it wouldn't come up on an exam. But let's take a look. So the first thing I want to talk about is how do you make an internal alkyne? So remember, these are the alkynes that are in the middle of the molecule. Well, the first way we can do it is if we have what's known as a gem dihalide. So let's say we have a Br twice right here. This is known as a gem dihalide. Now you say, what is gem? Gem is for geminal twins. So when you have the exact same group twice on the same carbon, it's called a gem. Okay, now when this reacts, you have to...